Today's industrial computer shenanigans are brought to you by Squarespace. But more on that in a bit. Previously on Action Retro. Questioning my life choices. We've put a completely reasonable amount of time, effort, and furniture damage into our quest to turn this 90s industrial computer into the world's most inconvenient gaming PC. Well, let's toss reason to the wind, because today we're overclocking this absolute unit of a Pentium PC to build the ultimate performance machine that nobody asked for. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy using expensive, application-specific computers, wrong, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. In our last two videos, we've done a ton of work on this 70 pound behemoth, all in the totally reasonable quest to play DOS games like Wolfenstein 3D on this wonderfully hideous membrane keyboard. If you missed those videos, check them out right here. Well, we got things mostly working with a fresh install of Windows 95 on an industrial flash storage module. But there's still something really hampering this thing's DOS and Windows gaming experience. I mean, other than its entire design and original purpose. And that's the processor, which on this thing is a 100 megahertz Pentium. Totally reasonable for controlling industrial machinery, even today. But we're not very reasonable at all here at Action Retro. And thanks to kind viewers, I've been sent a whole bunch of details and documentation about this very machine, including how to overclock it. Not only are we gonna do just that, but I procured a Pentium MMX processor rated at 200 megahertz, which should be a drop-in replacement for this thing's Socket 7. But first, off camera, I've already taken this thing apart down to its motherboard and uh, I've given it a thorough cleaning, but the main thing I wanted to do was address the big problem from our last video, which was the second IDE channel on the motherboard randomly stopped working. So I have Resoldered both of these IDE connectors on the board and uh, I figured it must be a cracked solder joint because I didn't change any jumpers Didn't change any bio settings. It just worked one minute and then failed the next So I figure we'll have our Windows 95 industrial flash disk module on the primary IDE and for the secondary Why don't we go with a nice? Apple DVD-ROM drive because yeah, it's the only IDE optical drive that I could find Okay, so I have the motherboard unceremoniously propped up on a comp USA keyboard box so we can put the video card in And have the bracket hang off the back All right, and our obnoxiously filthy <laughs> original power supply. This setup kind of makes you want to watch a Draga 1 video. And we're booting. It doesn't see the CD-ROM. Son of a gun. All right, I set this to master. The SSD should already be master. All right, well, it, it's not happy. Okay, <laughs> this uh, power supply is a bit much. And you know, we're building a gaming PC here. So there's no need for us to skimp on the power supply. Here we go, 750 watt EVGA modular power supply. Overkill? I think not. All right, let's just make sure she still boots. Oh yeah. Okay, I have found a setup that works and as you can see, it's not very janky at all. I wound up going with an MSATA SSD on an adapter that's on another adapter to connect a full-size IDE and it recognizes actually two gigs on this as opposed to only 500 megabytes 
on this thing and has the added benefit of allowing me to put another drive on the same IDE connector. And uh, yeah, this is the CF to IDE adapter onto which I put the Windows 98 install files and of course booted off of floppy disk here. And we now have a working Windows 98 install. So I think we can finally get down to the business of overclocking. Right after this word about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Create a fast, beautiful, and rich web experience for your business or brand using Squarespace's powerful all-in-one platform. It's really easy to get started. Like, say I wanted to build a website all about my grand ambitions to host industrial computer LAN parties. Not only could I build it in minutes with Squarespace, but I could do it without writing a single line of code. There's a ton of beautiful templates that I could choose to start from, and from there, it's simple to build a great looking site that's also fast, responsive, and great on mobile devices. With Squarespace's built-in tool set, I can optimize for SEO, manage a mailing list, check my analytics, and much more, all geared towards managing your entire web presence. So check out squarespace.com slash action retro today for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use code action retro to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So first I want to take out this original Pentium processor and we'll drop in our lovely Pentium MMX, which is also socket seven and should be rated to 200 megahertz. And before we do any thermal compound on there, I just want to make sure it actually boots, which it should. I mean, it's just a socket seven CPU. Now I have to jump the uh, power switch connector since I shut it down from Windows last time. Hey, look, it's working. All right. Let's go into setup and see what BIOS says we have. Oh, check it out. This is actually a 233 megahertz chip, not 200. <laughs> Don't worry about this screen turning blue. It's just, yeah, the screen itself is crapping out. Come on. Okay, so overclocking this board is actually very straightforward. There's a block of jumpers right here under this sticker that says 100 megahertz, which lets you configure the bus speed and uh, the CPU clock multiplier. And it came pre-configured for 100 megahertz and this very helpful sticker has the, uh, the settings to run the stock CPU at 100 megahertz. But the instructions for this board, very kindly sent over by a viewer, have different jumper settings that we can try. And we are going to try those, but first, probably we should put the heatsink and thermal compound on this processor so we don't fry it. All right, so the jumpers on here are split into four little groups of three sections labeled A, B, C, and D, which is a little bit hard to see because it's written real tiny on the motherboard here, so I'll probably overlay a picture. But according to the documentation, jumper block C here controls the host bus frequency and jumper block D controls the CPU clock multiplier. And I think I'll start off with the highest possible clock multiplier and host bus frequency and work my way down from there. All right, booting up with the overclock, hopefully. All right, so far so good. Here we go. <laughs> no, it went down to 200 megahertz. Okay, well, evidently I got that wrong. Let's try again. Okay, on this setting, I think it may have frozen. All right, I continue to go backwards. Now at 125 megahertz. Huh. All right, now 150. 
And this setting makes the keyboard not detected. All right, well, it appears that 233 megahertz is as fast as this board will push this CPU. And uh, can't say I'm complaining, of course, because it started out as 100 megahertz, and now it's 233 with MMX, and that's pretty sweet. So let's toss this back in the case and uh, make sure this power supply fits in there. And yeah, make sure everything works. Okay, before I put the motherboard back in, I think I'm gonna try to pop the front cover off and clean behind the glass that's in front of the screen a bit because there is dust there. Uh, and it shouldn't be too hard. There's just a, kind of an annoying amount of bolts going all the way around here. So yeah, I'm just gonna take them off with the handy electric screwdriver and see what happens. Ow. Got it. <laughs> oh boy, that's filthy. Well, I'm sure that's the first time any of this stuff was cleaned in the past 25 years. <laughs> okay, everything went back together nice and smoothly. Uh, so now we just have to fit our totally not overkill modular power supply in. Well, that doesn't quite line up with the holes, unfortunately. Let me see if I can scrounge up something else. So can you believe that a modern power supply did not just magically fit in here? So I had to make a couple modifications to this nice Corsair that I found, which is a slightly less complicated power supply than the other one. And uh, yeah, this is firmly into don't try this at home territory, but I had to relocate the power jack and power switch. But yeah, should be fine. All right, so I think we have pretty much a 50-50 chance of this thing starting up or exploding. Hey, there we go. But why is the screen white? Uh-oh. Okay, so no matter what I do, I can't get this internal display to show anything except for a white screen. And uh, I even tried the original power supply that didn't fix it. It did display video on an external display hooked up to the video card, so it's not completely dead. But I can't for the life of me, after several hours tearing this thing all the way back apart, figure this out. It might be down to this motherboard because already we've had one component on the board fail, the second IDE, and uh, yeah, perhaps there's something else failed on the motherboard as well. But I'm not giving up on this ridiculous machine just yet because actually a very kind viewer reached out with an offer for an extra motherboard. This person actually used to work on these machines and just happened to have one of these boards laying around. So I think I might go that route and see if I can't resurrect this thing with the MMX processor and have a super sweet gaming industrial computer. But for now, you can't win them all, so I'm gonna call this video here. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of these kinds of shenanigans, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Alex Hoffman, Camila Noseda, Chris Allegretta, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Cobalt Retrotech, Control Alt Reese, Daniel Hubbard, Greg from Hrut K Mods, Justin Reed, Michael Mulhern, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Thompson, Sutek, and Tom Woodfin, who are my highest tiered patrons, and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.